Good morning. It is Thursday, January 18th, about 5.30 a.m. I um, went to a fellowship last night where a sister of mine was sharing, and as she began sharing, I was actually meditating on something else. So I wasn't flowing with, with her the whole time, but I didn't realize that what I was meditating on was also what she was releasing um, in a different aspect. And so then the Holy Spirit just began to awaken me this morning, joining these revelations. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, Is that right, Genesis 2? I don't think it's 2 7. I'm getting I'm on another one here. Let me go there real quick. I think it's 128, isn't it? Well, I've lost it, but <laughs> where he says, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion. The image and the likeness is his righteousness, his holiness. It is his heart and his mind. It's his righteousness and his holiness, his heart and his mind. If we try to live with his mind and not with his heart, we live under a carnal commandment. We live under the law of the Old Testament. See, under the Old Testament, their heart was hardened. So they were in a law of bondage. See, the law of liberty joins the heart and mind of God. They were never meant to be separate. That's why in the garden you had the man and the woman. It was the heart and the mind joined in one. Eve had the heart Adam had the mind. But they were never meant to function separately. And thus, the division in the garden, the enmity, and thus the heart was not joined to the mind. And without the heart being joined to the mind, you cannot believe. For this is Romans, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. This is why their hearts were hardened. In Isaiah chapter 65, verse 2, it says, Yahweh says, I have stretched forth my hands all day long to a disobedient and gainsaying nation who walk after their own ways according to their own thoughts. What are his hands stretched forth? It says, here's my heart and my mind. In his left hand is his heart. His right hand is the truth, his mind his thoughts. But if you try and walk in the truth apart from knowing the intent of his heart, you enter into legalism, into scorn. Because the law of truth was never meant to be separate from the intent of his heart.
This is why Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1, I pray that God would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding, the King James says, I believe there, but it's actually the Greek word cardia, where we get cardiac heart. The eyes of your heart being enlightened that you may know. This is why Paul in Ephesians chapter 4 said, This I say there and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their minds, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Israel and the Old Covenant, their hearts were blinded. There was a veil over their heart and will never fully be able to see Christ without joining both the heart and the mind. When you try and walk in truth without the intent of his heart, you have scorn, you have, you have judgment, you have anger. This is so why often we see under the old covenant that God's angry because they didn't walk according to his heart the intent. The heart of God will lay down its life. Jesus came with both the heart and mind of the Father. This is why he brought a law of liberty. Come unto me. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, come unto me, all who labor and are heavy laden, trying to fulfill this law of love. You can't fulfill it without the heart of the Father. You can have the truth of his mind, and not, but not be able to fill it. You cannot fulfill it without his heart. You need his heart and his mind. Come unto me, all who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Isaiah 28 says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? This is his heart. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? The truth, his mind. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. If you look at the context, it's of these apostate, scornful teachers. Because they may have the letter of the law of my mind, but they don't have my heart. Whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast of these who don't have my heart. For precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, they give you the law. They give you the truth without the intent of the heart. See, this is why Jesus had liberty that, that on the Sabbath, right after he said that, right after he said, come unto me, all who labor and heavy laden, I will give, take my yoke upon you, this yoke of liberty. Right after that, we, we enter into the next chapter, 29, that says, at this time, that means right after Jesus taught this, it says they went, walked through, him and his disciples walked through the cornfields. And his disciples were, were, they hungered and they began to pick some of the corn and eat of it. And then the religious, the Pharisees were like, your disciples 
They do which is unlawful on the Sabbath. See, they have the letter of the law without the heart. Without the intent of the heart. And this is the same thing that those that try to still walk under the Torah. They are blinded and measure from the heart. As a friend, Peter Kirsten says, the Lord showed him those that try and walk in both covenants are like a, a double-headed serpent. The issue of the old covenant being never, never being able to walk and always failing is because they didn't have the heart. The hearts were darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. He has both the heart and mind of God. If you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, one who has both the heart and mind of God, that you put off concerning the former conversation or the former conduct, the old man, that only could walk according to the mind. It didn't have the heart. Put off the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and put on the new man, which after God, after his image and likeness, righteousness, his heart, holiness, the mind. Be righteous, my heart, holiness, my mind. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. It is the female attribute of God and the male attribute of God. In Isaiah chapter 11, It says, and there came forth a rod or a sprout out of the stem of Jesse, that's Messiah, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. See, this is my servant, the branch of Zechariah chapter 3. My servant, the branch, is those who walk in the Melchizedek priesthood, having both mercy and truth. They walk in both the heart and mind of God. That's the difference between this priesthood. And there came forth a rod of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. When Jesus was cut off, a branch grew out of his roots and will walk just as he walked in the heart and mind of God. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon them. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Do you hear the twins? Spirit of wisdom and understanding. Spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. Why? Because one is the heart. One is the mind. The spirit of wisdom, that's his heart. That's the feminine attribute. The spirit of wisdom and, and understanding, there's the mind. They're to be joined together. They were never meant to be separate. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel, there's the feminine attribute. Might, there's the male attribute the heart and the mind.
the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord, there's the male attribute. The knowledge, speaking of the knowledge of salvation, it's the heart. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Because he knows the heart and mind of God. But in righteousness shall he judge the poor from the heart of God and reprove with equity with the truth for the make of the earth. And he shall smite the earth and the oppressor with the rod of his mouth. The spirit of grace that flows from his heart, from his bleeding heart. He shall smite the oppressor with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, the ruach, the spirit of truth, shall he slay the lawless one, the wicked one, the lawless one, the carnal mind. It's both the heart and mind of God. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins. Knowing the heart of God and faithfulness, the faithfulness of his truth, and faithfulness, the girdle of his reins, the wolf shall dwell with the lamb. Oh, there's the two attributes. The lamb represented with the heart that will lay down its life. The wolf, that male attribute. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down the kid, with the kid. The calf, the young lion, and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The ox and the bear shall feed, and their young ones shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. It's things being restored. It's the restoration of all things. It's functioning not just out of one side of our mind, but both. That right side which flows in mercy and that right side which flows in truth. We see in Isaiah 61, it says, The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon me. What's that? The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the heart and mind, heart and mind, heart and mind. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. The spirit of wisdom, the heart of God. To preach good tidings to the meek. See, we believe with the heart. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and opening a prison to them that are bound, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. When Jesus came to Israel, he came to give them the heart of God, for their heart was hardened and their minds were blinded. The law was given by Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. You know, we see in the world 
Grace is a feminine name. When people, those who have the name Grace, it's, well, I've never known a male that has the name Grace. There could be. Because it's that feminine attribute that flows from his heart. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Let me go back to Isaiah 28. Whom shall he teach knowledge? The knowledge of salvation, those who have his heart. And whom shall he teach doctrine? Those who have his mind. On whom the Holy Spirit rests, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the best breasts. For precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line. Here little, there little. For stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. For this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing to know both the heart and mind of God. This is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. But they said, we will not hear. We will not walk therein. Jeremiah 6.16 says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old or the eternal paths. What are these eternal paths? Psalm 25.10, David says, All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. Unto such as keep his covenant. Unto such as keep his covenant. That have both his heart and his mind. who have the oneness of both the feminine and the male. Let us make man in our image, mankind in our, our image, with having both our heart and our mind, and let's bring them as one. But if there's separation, it doesn't work. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the ancient or the old, the eternal paths, mercy and truth. Ask for them. Where is the good way, the way of love? And walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Father, I thank you for the restoration. I thank you for sending your son to show us your heart. Not just your mind, but your heart that we can know the intent of your words, that we can know the import of your words. Not just words standing alone, but we know the heart that it flowed out of, a heart of mercy, a heart that would lay down its life. The heart of a mother. The heart of a father, the mind of the father. And Jesus, as he laid down his life and ascended to the right hand of the father, from there he poured out the spirit of truth.
the spirit of grace and truth. For the law was given by Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit brought the spirit of grace and truth. The heart and the mind joined together in one. If we'll walk after the spirit, we will hear, we will hear both the truth and the heart. And we can believe because we understand his heart. Romans 10, 9, 10 says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. There it is. The righteousness is, is knowing his heart. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Holy Spirit, I thank you for connecting us up in our hearts and minds. That we may be one. That we may be one as you are one, having both your heart and your mind. Father, I pray not for them alone, but also for all of them that shall believe in me through their name, that they may be one as we are, one as thou, Father, art in me and I in you, that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me and the glory which you have given me, glory of the Holy Spirit. this anointing of your heart and your mind. This glory of your love manifested through your heart and your mind. This revelation of your love and the glory which you have given me, I have given them that they may be one as we are. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be perfect in one, that the world may know. <laughs> that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them, and have loved them as thou hast loved me. O righteous Father, Father, I will that those you have given me be with me where I am that they may behold my glory, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you. I know both your heart and your mind. And these have known that you have sent me, and I have declared unto them your name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith you have loved me, may be in them, and I in them. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, according as he has chosen us, in him, in Christ, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy, having his mind, his mind, and without blame, righteous, having his heart. That we may be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto sonship through Jesus Christ unto himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, unto the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, 
that bleeding heart. Receive the heart of the Father. That you may believe. The blood is sprinkling that cleanses the heart from the evil conscience of unbelief. Holy Spirit, I thank you for quickening our hearts and our minds. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. You give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. The eyes of our hearts being enlightened that we may know what is the hope of your calling and what the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints and what the exceeding greatness of your power to us were to believe according to the working of your mighty power which you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead and set him at your own right hand far above all principality, power, dominion and might in every name that is named. Thank you, Father, that all hell can't stop it. I thank you for the restoration of all things that shall be manifested through those who walk according to your heart and your mind. The Psalm 110 says, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Yahweh shall send forth the scepter of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. See, the reign of the king is in mercy out of his heart. The rule of the king, the law, is out of his mind. Out of his mind. <laughs> From his mind. See, that's why we have the reign of the kingdom and the rule. The rule is the truth, the mind. The reign of God is from his heart, his mercy. That's why Isaiah 16, 5 says, In mercy the throne is established, his heart, and he shall sit upon it in truth. His rule, his law, his, his mind. In mercy the throne is established, and he shall sit upon it in truth. Truth coming out of his heart that will lay down its life. In mercy the throne is established, and he shall sit upon it in truth, in the tabernacle of David, judging and seeking judgment and hasting righteousness. This is righteous judgment that flows out of both the heart and mind of God. Thank you, Father. I thank you for this spirit resting upon us in full measure, <laughs> that we may walk just as you walked, that we may walk just as your son walked, holy and without blame before you in love. As David says, I will walk before Yahweh in the land of the living through mercy and truth with your heart and your mind. Proverbs 16, 6, by mercy and truth, the heart and mind of God, iniquity is purged, the Antichrist spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for sealing this word into the hearts and minds of your people. In Jesus' name, shalom, shalom.